picks advance for game number one. Between Longju Gaming and SK Telecom T1, our current reigning world champions are in a little bit of trouble. And they are going to ban the Nidalee out against Blank, uh, considering Chaser's proficiency on that champion, but it is a bit of a surprise. Africa chose to ban the Ezreal, Azir, and Nami. And I actually think that the Nami ban is pretty impactful because Wolf hasn't shown up on a lot of these other uh, popular range supports. Yeah. Of course, we know him for fantastic Alistair and Janna play, but with both of those slipping out of the meta, and the Azir, despite Coco's proficiency on that champion, is also going to be banned. All right, so SK Telecom taking shots at the top lane with the Irela, Irelia and the Fiora ban so far. And you'd think Duke would be the type of person to really embrace this uh, top lane, you know, carry meta that we're seemingly kind of moving into, but it, uh, it has not worked out for him well so far. Well, he, he has a lot of other potential carry top lane picks that sure. I think he can rely on here. The Karma ban coming in, something SK Telecom has used a lot this season, and then finally the Rai is taken up by SKT, and that's going to lead to a first pick Vlad for Long Juke. Yeah, to, to be expected, I think Coco has been solid on this pickup, it and he's shown like he's shown uh, he played it into the uh, Anivia that Crown was playing when they played against Samsung, and he was remarkably good at getting flashing over the wall and playing aggressively deep into the backfield on Anivia. Yeah, you gotta wonder if SK Telecom is confident, uh, though, that Faker's Anivia can be the the better one. We have not seen uh, Ilawi yet, but. <laughs> pick is a little bit interesting from the side of SK Telecom. I wonder why they were prioritizing that quite so heavily. Yeah, you do wonder what they're going to go for. Now, uh, taking Sivir away from SKT has been pretty popular lately, but it went through this time. So Bang can play that champion that's brought them a lot of success. They don't have the karma to pair with it, but things could be worse. They also did, uh, Africa did allow them to play the Sivir in the last set. It's true. And perhaps they don't think that is quite as big of a concern. Janair certainly found it that way. Yeah. Um, but oh, the, the Ash, I suppose. Yeah, and the Jin. Okay, these are yeah. picks, uh, everything that we've seen new from Bang this season, relying on the Ash and Jin. And it will be the Adivia pick up into the Vladimir again. This is the counter pick in lane that SK Telecom used in their 2-0 victory over the Rocks Tigers. Yep. So, uh, anticipating the Vlad first pick and anticipating that Faker's Anivia is going to be enough to handle it. Yep, and they use the Anivia Ezreal into the Swain and Vladimir composition that the Rock Tigers threw at yeah. them with uh, aplomb, let's say. It was very effective. Huh. Yeah. And they're going, Longshu is going to need some other form of engage. Uh, the Bard pick, especially for Pure, going to be a natural fit so that you can actually tie people up long enough because if the wall goes up from Anivia, you can always just throw the Tempered Fate over the top of it and wait out the wall if you need to. So you can come up with some form of secondary engage and they're going to go for the long range route with the gym. So Fury and last season when Fury wasn't performing at the standard we came to expect from him on Samsung, the Jin pick was the one champion that he looked yeah. really good on. Whoa, and Nar locked in for Duke. Yep. Interesting. We've seen this uh, we've seen this picked up multiple times now across regions. It's been popular in Europe to uh, counterpick the Trundle with the Nar. Right. And uh, that's going to come through yet again today. Duke. Obviously, we feeling pretty good about that. Tons of crowd control from the SKT composition. Synergy with the Anivia wall with the NAR ultimate. You can actually yeah, make your own terrain to stun people into, which is one of the big 
upsides of that particular combination of champions, and they are trying to find out a way to stop a possible split push. Longju, reliant on the Bard ultimate here. They are really going to need Pure to be great with his tempered face if they want to execute any kind of 5v5 team fight because their engage, apart from that, is going to be on the weaker side. That's right. Well, both of these teams with a big opportunity here. Longju sensing the vulnerability of SK Telecom and SKT just badly in need of a match to get themselves back on track here in round one. And even though they've only had uh, two match losses so far this season, they have been pretty one-sided. So a win here today would kind of vault them back into first place, put them back in a spot to finish the first round uh, strongly, and they hope make everyone forget about those last two matches. I know I want to. <laughs> Well, it's interesting to see how everybody is beating everybody else. That's right, Longju versus SK Telecom. Time to get into game number one. Let's do this. First dragon for Longju versus SKT here in game one. I like it. Well, that, see some action. Yeah, that actually should favor Longju because we're going to be seeing a couple of tier champions on the side of SK Telecom. Speaking of SKT, looks like they really want to know what's going on in this uh, early lane swap situation here. Some yeah, pretty deep wards. Yeah, they're going to want the Trundle matchup more than likely uh, into the NAR. This is going to be Duke's first game of the season on NAR. Seen Expression try out the NAR previously. Yeah. But no use for SKT, so coming in with a bit of a curveball. They are going to be very good at kiting with this composition, and that's going to be their main goal. But again, the early Infernal Drake uh, could be uh, turning things around. And there's a picture of Wolf. Wow. It's a very well rendered Wolf. So Expression is going to be showing on the ward. Yeah taking it out a little bit too close right there to the turret so they got vision of it and he and chaser will be heading up towards the grob for a nice leash so standard lanes it will be sound like yoda there for a second <laughs> standard lanes <it> will be. <laughs> maybe i should try an entire cast just uh doing that speaking be, like yoda be my does. guess <laughs> go for it i'm not gonna do that well harassment oh. early on yeah, Wolf taking some serious damage as Pure and Fury come into the jungle. They really want that Gromp. Gromp does go to Bang, but Wolf may have to burn a Summoner. Yeah, there's the Flash. So was it worth it? And heal. They did get, uh, yeah, the Summoner heal too. Uh, Pure well, did use the Ignite, but uh, Longju definitely coming out the winners there. Yeah, Wolf. Cosmic Binding. Go for some nope. of those biscuits early, and that is a very real danger. So hmm. even though they get the Gromp, uh, they stuck around to actually fight for it. So. But the zoning now, due to the chip damage, may prevent them from getting that faster level two. But it looks like they're going to be able to pick it up just with uh, farming for the Mystic Shots. So should stabilize a little bit. Just some consumables used early on in addition to the two summoner spells. True sure enough. And Bang and Wolf probably a bit more comfortable in this lane than, uh, like you mentioned, Wolf with that Nami so far has struggled a little bit. Probably feeling a bit better on the Braum. And Faker, I mean, it's, I don't think I've ever really said this before, but like uh, some serious questions about him coming into this match. I mean, I think Faker has a singularly looked pretty off in the last yes. couple matches among the SK Telecom players, just making a lot of I mean, Faker's known for being overly aggressive, but generally that works out pretty well. Yeah, this is clever. Longju uh, taking the full side of the jungle on their blue side and coming in yeah. for a quick blue steal on the opposite side of the map, knowing that they have the pressure in the bottom side. And I guess so. uh, they had already done the damage to Bang and Wolf and left them with a summoner advantage. So nice little play there. Right. N nice adaptation of pathing from Chaser. And that's going to be important because SKT may have tried to hand that first blue buff over to Faker. Yeah. Speaking of Faker, to kind of finish that thought, we haven't seen him be this over aggressive and take yeah. this big of a risk, you know, when he decides to go in and 
It's resulted in some pretty embarrassing moments for him in the last couple matches. Absolutely, including a 0-5-0 game on LeBlanc. And yeah, one I don't think I'd ever see that. One of his formerly best champions. Undefeated for a long time on that. Doing things like diving under turret and dying to the jungler. I mean, it's, it's been a bad couple matches for Faker. And, and uh, we'll see if he can play things a bit cleaner this time around. Playing in Nivea helps, though. You can't really flash in and be aggressive on <laughs> Nivea too often. So. You know, flash wall people. Yeah, there you go. If you can make it work, I'd be impressed. <laughs> if anyone could, it'd be Faker. Or Frog. Or Frog. <laughs> Yeah, you can see uh, Duke really taking advantage of this matchup with a uh, ranged harassment yeah. in the early phases. Probably going to see this Nar build pretty aggressively so that he can continue to pump out the damage onto Trundle. You have to be a little bit careful during some of these ganks that you can use your hop to actually get around and play around the Trundle pillar. So there's some risk. Well, he kept uh, especially getting the cannon minion there. That was a nice little win. Here comes Blank. Maybe a dive. Yep, looks like they will try to go for it. Expression down to a third health already. There's a knock up. Expression trying to flash away, and despite the Meganar attempt, uh, didn't the, work out. The Meganar timing actually wasn't that great for Duke because he's not level six yet. Yeah. So having the ranged auto attack is probably actually better for him underneath the turret. Right. And they do burn a flash, trading it for Blank's flash, which is very acceptable because now Expression is going to be nervous when it comes to pushing up his own lane and maybe calling in some extra jungle support. In the meantime, though, Chaser is going to do a little bit of cross-map counter-jungling, using that window of time to take what he can. Might as well. Coco gaining a bit of a CS lead in the mid lane in the meantime. Not a big one, but it's interesting. Yeah, Duke actually going for the Boots of Swiftness first. So, wow. really prioritizing his ability to kite and uh, harass the Trundle. If Trundle starts backing away, you can close that gap, maybe get a couple more auto attacks in. So, you really just want the Hyper procs coming through. Yeah. This will allow him to maximize that and really dance around the Trundle. Well, Blank, seen on that trap, gonna get slowed down, coming in for the gank anyway. Flash is used by the Longju bot lane. Fury trying to get away, and it looks like they'll be satisfied with just that. Bang used his summoner heal again, just to speed people up a little bit. Yeah. Trading uh, one heal for a heal and a flash. Not bad. Really not bad. And Blank has been having a far larger effect on the map to this point in the game than Chaser has, who's been yeah. more concerned with farming up and taking away some of those camps for Blank rather than going for ganks himself, although that may change. Watch him move up towards that scuttle crab. Ward in the river, though, and they know he was just those raptors as he was seen by Blank there, chucking the volatile spiderling. Pretty crucially, Fury still has his flash. That's going to definitely keep this bot lane safer. I, I do worry, though, when you give Bang Ezreal. Ezreal is such a huge threat in the late game. Sure. Uh, just as a champion, his damage output is nuts. But when you also couple it with the fact that Whoa. Bang is very good and Faker could see something like this. Down. There's a wall. Pure takes a magical journey through the turret, though. Clever. Yep. If the angle had been just a little bit different, maybe they could have gotten that. But Faker trying to find an opportunity. Unfortunately, doesn't even get another summoner out. But the bottom lane doing quite well despite a rough start for SKT. Yeah. Reverse their fortunes now with some help from Faker and Blank. And they should be feeling good, uh, at least for the time being, although now that we're going to see the tier buy, he's going to go for the Sheen, so uh, okay. playing it about as aggressively as you can. Well, probably better than the uh, well, whole tier that we saw before. Uh, you, you just can't do that against yeah. uh, the Jin. He's going to come back into lane with a couple long swords and a serrated Dirk. If you, uh, if you try and play Tier Cole right now, you will get wrecked. Oh, Cocoon onto Wolf. They're going to put some damage. And uh, Longju trying to ward a little bit around this dragon. Both of these teams, no doubt, pretty desperate. Of course, I say that, that Bang, Drake. Bang also picks up the call. Oh, well, <laughs> at least he's got the Sheen, yeah, you know? The Sheen, he's not getting too greedy. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty greedy. He had a little bit of extra money, looks like, on that uh, 
he uh, waited around there for the call. Uh, but definitely prioritizing the sheen so that he can actually poke efficiently and not, as you say, give up a, a chance for an Infernal Drake. But, yeah, double tier Infernal Drake spawn. Bad times, really, for SKT. That's not what you want to see when you come into this game with the composition that you're running. Well, we'll see if Long Zhu can capitalize on that and take that Infernal Drake. And you only need one good curtain call, and SKT yeah. will not be able to fight at that Drake any longer. That's true. Got a poke from Fury. Theoretically, enough right away. Here comes Chaser, maybe a play on the Duke, gets slowed down by the pillar. Duke has his flash, though. Nice! Oh, bounces right into the cocoon. I mean, Blank coming in to counter this gank, but that was a that was a nice skill shot from Chaser. Yeah, good reaction from Longju, not actually pursuing that when they saw Blank coming in. Right. However, that was a nice prediction yeah, on good. the cocoon by Chaser. Uh, uh, there's probably not enough follow-up damage anyway to actually take that out, because if we look at the build path, Chaser has gone from mobility boots first wow. on Elise. That is something we don't see very often, so... Maybe he, feeling the pressure of Blank kind of being around the map, ganking a lot. Yeah, and also just uh, he, if Blank continues to show himself, the faster he can counter jungle too will be valuable. You can see he's already gotten a pretty nice CS advantage. True. Playing around the ganks that Blank has been making. And uh, But the other problem is Expression has Corrupting Potion and Ruby Crystal and Doran's Shield. So they probably couldn't kill Duke anyway, especially with his flash up. No damage. Still a nice cocoon. It was. It was you nice can't cocoon. take that away from him. I'm not trying to. <laughs> so our mad life is like, that was a nice skill shot. Well, meanwhile, down the bot lane, Fang still with a little bit of a CS lead. And that turret is starting to take some damage. Doing a nice job. They have the Braum up against the Jin. And it was a, it was the Jin was picked into the Braum. Uh, Blank actually going to use the pressure to take Whoa. this Infernal Drake. It would be a big takeaway. But they saw Chaser on the top side of the map. They have a ward in the enemy jungle, so yeah. they know that this is going to be pretty safe. Not only that, pure recalling. So SK Telecom kind of lucking out here. Well, that is big that they're able to Huge. augment that uh, softer early game with that Infernal Drake. Ooh, it's going to be an Ocean next. That is massive for them that they didn't even have to fight over that Drake curtain call. We're gonna try and poke Bang out now. Yeah. He did land a couple of those bullets onto Bang, but yeah, bad recall timing, and Chaser just caught on the opposite side of the map in Vision. Ooh, that is, yeah, Longshu not playing around that particularly well. Chaser really needed to prioritize what was going on at the bottom side of the map and help out against the Ezreal Braum combination because just giving that one away is is a very big win for SKT. Yeah. They are able to do some damage to Chaser in the jungle. Wolf comes out to help his mid laner. Faker consistently about 10 CS behind, but not really far falling any farther behind. So pretty good in the mid lane. Positive aspect of this matchup, though, in spite of falling behind in CS, is that you do force the Vlad to build Magic Resist first, so it has been a Spirit sure. Visage. Whoa. Bang's trying to add a bit of damage onto uh, Expression there. Yeah, Expression's been having a tough time, but Duke is working slowly at the chip damage. Blank there on that minion wave. Great presence on the map from Blank just to make sure that if there was a gank, he would be available. And Chaser has to come up to the top side and cover while Expression recalls to make sure somebody gets that. And, and Chaser's been doing a little bit of triage on this top lane. That means showing himself frequently, however, which has opened up for those uh, kind of plays like we saw around the early Infernal Drake. Oh, Braum Ultimate forcing the flash out of pure. And Wolf just kind of maybe feigning uh, that was gank a, from Blank. That was a total mind game from <laughs> Wolf kidding. to get that flash out there. Yeah. Faker wasn't even in lane. Uh, there was a possibility of a teleport from Duke, which is why the flash was used there, because Duke was also not in lane. And they didn't know where the Rek'Sai was, because he uh, just recalled and uh, used the Void Rush. So free flash, basically. Nice mind game from Duke. Yeah. Uh, Wolf. Or from Wolf, yeah. yeah. Come on, man, give the support some credit. I see what you're <laughs> trying to do here. 
Here's Duke now. Expression, oh no, that's Expression coming in. I'm bad at this too. Cocoon on the flank, he's in big trouble. That could be first blood. Faker trying to stop it, but no. First blood going over to Expression. Coming in with that TP, they caught Blank in their jungle. And that is a much needed kill to stabilize this lane. Expression has been building full tank, going for a Sunfire Cape first because of the harassment. Duke with the speed and now the frozen mallet means that he can basically kite out this trundle forever. Yeah. And getting a little bit of extra gold in the pocket of Expression, he, he needs to be able to push up that lane and in the absence of being able to build a Tiamat, he has to settle for the AOE magic damage from the Sunfire Cape instead. That important pickup. Yeah, for sure. Meanwhile, Bang uh, gaining more and more of his CS lead. Not in bot. Yeah, this, is, uh, this is looking like SKT is just going to be able to hold out right now without being uh, you know, required, really, to fight over the second Drake here, the Ocean Drake. They will feel a little bit more comfortable again getting their double tier and rod composition rolling and as soon as you get those stacking items up that infernal drake becomes even scarier yep. the even start though overall slight edge to sk telecom and we'll see if they can keep it up but uh, this is one of those series where you know at the beginning of the season you would ask me i'm like well yeah skt 2 easy but I think we could see three games here. Quite possible. Uh, it looks like Longju, uh, they did play into a known quantity composition coming in with the uh, Vladimir. Apparently they were confident that they could at least beat it considering that they played against Samsung and picked up a win in spite of this very tough matchup for Vlad when it comes to team fighting in the late game. And SKT had a lot of answers this game. I, I like the fact that we're seeing the Trundle come out, or the uh, Nar come out into the Trundle. And Duke playing the matchup quite well. Yeah, it's been working great so far. Faker. Doing well again, you know, still about 10 CS behind Coco. Keeping up pretty easily in lane now, though. Yeah, a little more than 10. Turret going down, huge for SKT. Just been chipping away mercilessly in the side lanes. Yeah. And that's going to translate to a nice gold swing in their favor whenever they can take out that top side. All and right. Longju really losing a lot of control right now. Well, pings around the dragon. They want to try to get some vision back. And the Ocean Drake, not the most useful out of the four, but be better than letting SKT happen, I suppose. Shut Barrage. Scares Fury out of the bush. Proto Belt next for Vlad, giving him a bit more power on his engage. Longju, though, looking pretty tentative besides the one TP play they were able to execute, and it was really only a kill, so couldn't transition that kill into any meaningful objectives. Yeah. All right, Drake is up. It's time. Will we see a fight? SK Telecom in a little bit better position to do that this time. They do take the Rift Scuttler, and they're just going to start it. No Long TP June. for Expression, uh, because Duke actually canceled his TP on that last gank. He's going to have it up sooner. Wow, SKT just getting it. A little steal attempt from Fury, and then another Infernal Drake next. So these Drakes are starting to get pretty worrisome for Long June. Yeah. And SKT gets the next Drake with this kind of composition. It's pretty much game over. Yeah. Uh, as long as they don't make any tremendous errors, there's not really a way that Longju will be able to fight them because the split push will not be working against the Nar. Nar will have too much damage. And then if they try to team fight, the Ezreal and Evia combination is going to be devastating. And Longju will have to basically pray for some Bard, Jin, and Elise picks to turn the game around. But by the time that Drake spawns, we're going to see pretty much full stacks on the tier. So that's going to be right at the start of SKT's power spike. And they're going to take the Rift Herald as well. They're kind of taking the map at the moment. I like the philosophy for SKT coming into this game, though. I mean, just play something safe, play something a little bit slower, more methodical. And uh, they've been handling that, at least. 
Pretty well so far in this game. Yeah. Playing around the recalls to actually pick up that Infernal Drake was a bit of a masterstroke for them. Yeah. Because if that doesn't go their way, things could have ended pretty quickly. This is a clever gank, though. Let's see if it works. They're going to go into Wolf. Yeah, Wolf in big trouble, catching him completely. Whoa, oh, flashes wow. away. Doesn't make it, though. Tempered Fate locks up Bang. He's able to flash out, though, after it ends. He actually got hit, and then the arcane shift went through, so he was actually golden on the outside yeah. of the radius of the Tempered Fate, nearly dying also, but did have his two summoner spells up to escape after that. Good play from Longju, though. It looks like they're just going to bulldoze their way through this top lane turret for the moment as well. Yeah, Expression did use his ult, so they, they're trying to just trade objectives right now where they can and fight their way back into this game when it comes to gold, which they will be successful in doing. Uh, Duke also not going to deny too many minions on the bottom tier two. He will be able to pick up a red buff, though, which will add to Expression's misery. The suffering of the Expression. Yeah, it's, a, it's rough. He hasn't had a lot of jungle help this game compared to Duke. And uh, to get the first blood, so he's got that going for them. But now Duke with a red buff, com that just compounds things. The Boots of Swiftness, the Frozen Mallet, and the red buff, especially you can basically do nothing. Oh, yeah. Besides just get free auto-attacked all day by this Gnar. Longju is pushing into the top jungle, though, for SK Telecom. Trying to do work there. Coco slowed up with the wall, but Faker not going in. Deciding to play it safe. Well, it's not going to go in win. I would hope he would go in win. His team doesn't control that top side of the map, but he has been yeah. not making the best plays. I would have said Faker from uh, two weeks ago never would have done that. But Faker from last week, maybe, maybe. Last week's Faker was not very impressive. This week's Faker was actually potentially less impressive. <laughs> but today's Faker seems OK. Really starting to put on that damage now. Yeah. Uh, this next Drake fight should be interesting and will probably decide the outcome of this game one way or one way or another. And Longju would have to take more besides the Infernal Drake if they want to actually win this one. But SKT, nice push into the mid lane, and everything has been clean from SKT. Like smart, calculated League of Legends, besides blanks. A little bit of an overextension, but it wasn't, it didn't cost them very much, and they also did get a lot of deep wards in as a result of his invade. Kind of feels like we're seeing SKT just go back to the basics of this game, you know? Just trying to play some fundamentally strong League of Legends. Yeah, and they haven't gotten the kills, but they've gotten the gold lead just by playing around objectives better. Yeah. And by making cross map plays. Duke going back now and starting to build towards. I, I would guess, I don't know, he, he could go either way, random into a dead man's play. We'll see what he decides. Yep. Shafaraj cuts through Pure and Chaser. Turret already down, so Bang just trying to soften up the minion wave. So Tier's not fully stacked yet. This is an important point as to whether they are going to end up full in the next minute and a half or not. It could be just barely on the outside of getting the Muramana. Blank and the Seraph's Embrace. Uh, Cocoon misses Blank barely. Chaser may get stunned here. A couple more hits will do it. Here comes Fury. Yeah, they need to be careful. Tempered Fate catches Blank. Here comes Coco as well. Baker way up in the top lane. Blank tries to flash away, gets hit with Cocoon afterwards. Wolf using that ultimate from Rom to try to zone out, keep Blank safe. Looks like it worked. Chaser now the one who's low. Bang and Wolf though slowed up. Nobody dying in the end. And with Faker all the way up in top lane, Longju kind of thought maybe we've got an opportunity here. Yeah, they did get the flash out, but that's about all that happened. And nice root. Whoa, yeah, Wolf could be in trouble. Coco doing a lot of damage as well. One more for Curtain Call, and Fury gets the snipe. Meanwhile, Bang dodges some shots. But they do lose Wolf right before the dragon comes up, and that is pretty bad. Looks like they're going to lose their mid lane turret as well. Yeah, True Shot Barrage not going to be enough to clear out that way. Blank can't even walk forward because he doesn't have flash right now, so could be wow. the end of him if he were to go up too far on that engagement. So yeah. Longju turning it around, and that's what they had to do. They had to get these picks, but Faker playing cross map right now is going to get this turret, but he's only got 10 seconds to get down to this Infernal Drake. 
You know and he's going to recall, too. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. So that series of plays results in a turret and an uncontested Drake there. And that's the power of Jin. This is why we see so many teams going to him right now, because he's so potent on just one to two items with all of that armor penetration. And the fact that he can get that long range crowd control in, devastating, because you never know. You can't see him that he's there when he's doing it. And playing around that, because all he needs is damage from one of his allied champions to be able to hit that root. Yep. Pretty deadly. So double Proto Belt, by the way, Chaser and Coco, both with it. And I think this is the game where you do that. You you have to figure out ways to close the gap after the wall and the arcane shift come through. Yeah. Yeah, and you can certainly chase an Ezreal a lot better with the Proto Belt. Proto Belt, Flash, Cocoon, maybe, the extra range. Even escaping sticky situations. That too. Uh, with the, that you might get yourself into with the wall being present, perhaps cutting off your escape route. Lots of reasons to like that on this particular combination of champions. Duskblade finished for Fury. This is the, the big point in time where the Jin gets incredibly dangerous, as we've seen, especially this week from Arrow and Prey. Yeah. SKT still farming a little bit in their opponent's jungle anyway. What they can. Oh, they may have found a plan to Fury. They get the flash. So that's something. But here comes Chaser. Cocoon misses. Tempered Fate does not, though. Blank caught up by that a little bit. Teleport coming in for SK Telecom. Baker coming from the side. Wolf low, but Duke is in the back. Has the uh -oh. Longju team split up. He's going to go into Fury. Nice ult against the wall from that Nar. Fury in big trouble here. Still alive for the moment, but Baker finally finishes him off. Crowd loving it. Coco trapped by the wall, and that's the strength of that Anivia. Oh, they miss him with the Brom Q, though, and Coco's going to live to fight another day. Or unlive, I guess, because he's kind of a vampire. You know Is he mean. dead? Kind of. I don't know. Well, that was a great teleport from Duke, and that's been one yeah. of the problems that reemerged in the last couple of matches, that Duke really wasn't playing very well with the rest of his team late on the TP timing. But once you have that flash out of the Jin, all of a sudden, when Duke has his flash up and is in Mega Nar form, the Narbar in a perfect position to set up for a kill onto the Jin. Let's watch that one again. Yeah, just great play. So Fury, they burn his flash early, and now this gets a little bit greedy. He's got a trap there in front of him, and they want to get it. Now his fourth shot is actually super good. He actually gets it around blank onto Wolf, but Duke shows up. Timing couldn't be better. Just the Narbar in the absolute best possible place. Pure also position the end of the magical journey right into the Gnarled. And Longshu, pretty lucky they didn't lose more. Coco has to pull Proto Belt around the side and use his flash. Thanks to Faker's Wall. So a lot of important summoners burn from Longshu and SKT wants Whoa. a Baron. Yeah, they're going for it. No vision right now. They see it. There's oh, they blue, do, you're right. There's a blue trinket. Never mind. They spot it. Here's the teleport coming in. Longju trying to do it. Baron goes over to SKT before they can get it, though. And now the fight, Coco forced to pull away. A lot of damage coming in from that Jin, though. Wolf in a bit of trouble as Expression walks up. Gets bounced up, though, as the Brahm ultimate comes back through. Bank very low. Baker trying to do work, and he does some. Double kill for Baker. Expression on his own now. Triple kill for Baker. Make quadra. it a Quadra. Could be. Can he get the Penta? Doesn't look like it. Pure on the way out a little bit too quick. Baker looking for it. He wants it. Oh, oh so close. Not no. going to throw a Q over that wall <laughs> to go ahead and check, unfortunately. Did you know that Faker has only had one pentakill in his entire career? Really? Yeah, it seems very odd, but it's true. Huh. That was nearly number two. Yeah, very close. Only pure escapes, but that's going to be the Baron for SK Telecom, and that's going to probably be an inhibitor trade, if not an inhibitor as well. Well, just sneaking away with that Baron, you have to respect the damage that Anivia can put down yeah. onto a Baron, and uh, this has been uh, basically a perfect storm for Longshu. Uh, they didn't play aggressively enough in the early game. Uh, I think Chaser was not putting down enough pressure on the Elise, and uh, they're just going to get this one basically for free. 
Coco does what he can on the flank. Only a two-man Hebo plate, though. Has to back out. Pure gets poked pretty heavily to start this fight. Especially can never really be involved because, again, SK Telecom is excellent at kiting out this Vladimir. But, wow. man, that was a massive play from Duke. And the biggest problem is Pure saved his ult until right there. He had his ult up for that entire fight. Had a very good opportunity to use it earlier on. Was trying to be cute, trying to delay. But had he been able to catch out Duke, that fight may have gone very differently. Yeah. Certainly could have. SKT not able to get the inhibitor, but to their credit, when people started coming back up again, they immediately backed away. They, even though they had a good amount of health, this is this is a much more uh, this is a much more tight-looking SKT today than we've seen in the last couple matches. Well, also Longju, I think they bo they botched their early game. We didn't see uh, any attempts to snowball after the very preferable summoner spell trade that Longju forced right at level one. And Chaser was just showing on wards or showing up to lanes. It, it, they, they didn't expect the Gnar counter pick for the yeah. Trundle, quite clearly. All right, trying to make something happen here. Chaser very, very low as SKT pushes up this 2-2 turret. Blank coming from the side. They may have expression. He's gonna flash away. Hey, SK Telecom gets the turret. You're not gonna win at this point. Two Infernal, or an Infernal Drake alongside the just extreme late game damage of Ezreal and Anivia. They've also nullified any chance for a Trundle split push. SKT should be able just to roll to this, uh, to a game one win here. Certainly looking that way. And a uh, bit of a relief if you're an SKT fan. Longju though. Seemed like uh, it, it seemed like it was very close to being a close game, if that makes any sense, you know? Well, it was, and I, I just think that the way they played passively early on and, and Chaser running around the map trying to triage the top lane matchup, but really just needing to find a winning lane to snowball. Yeah. And the gank that they had on top was unsuccessful, and so SKT was able just to push and bully out that bottom lane. Not really sure what happened down there. You think that Jin and Bard would be able to Whoa, fare a little bit better in the 2v2? Right onto Coco. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it. I think part of it comes down to Bang just being such a good Ezreal player. Able to, I mean, if you can dodge the damage Jin puts out and do damage to him in return, win the lane that way. That's why I really like the bans that we saw Africa use. The Ezreal and the Nami, yeah. I think, are smart. And you just have to take the Ezreal away from Bang. It's it's too much to try and deal with him. He is probably the best Ezreal player in the world right now, just because he knows the limits of the champion so well. You see him arcane shifting forward in situations that no other Ezreal I know would choose to do. Yeah. But he often than not can just blow people up or catch them out for a pick with the Iceborne Gauntlet. True enough. SKT with that 4-1 split push, Tempered Fate, it's a big one. Can Longju work with this? Coco comes in with a big Hemo Plague. There's the Brahm ultimate to help SKT disengage. Fury really low right off the start of that fight. Faker though has to be careful, has to stay away. Curtain Call comes in, Jin's pushing this one back. Duke in a little bit of trouble, gets hit, nearly gets taken down. Nice! Big pillar from Expression, that could be it for Longju. They could win this fight. SKT trying to turn it around though, Blank. Already down, Duke's still alive, they're gonna get Coco, no, he gets into pool just at the last minute. Gnar ultimate comes in, but nobody dying. Meanwhile, Fury gets one kill. Faker starting to turn this one around along with Bang. Somehow Duke lives, and SKT, man, talk about putting the kiting power of that comp to work. And that's it, wow. and we've seen him do it against the Vladimir before. Coco had an awesome engage there to start off that yeah. fight. The Hemo Plague was perfectly timed with the end of the Tempered Fate. It gave him, the Bartle gave him the time he needed to come around the flank and to actually pull that play off. And this is about as good of an engage as long as you could possibly hope for. Ghost comes in from Coco, hits the big Hemo Plague, forces some flashes out instantaneously, and uh, they get blank right off the bat. But you just can't underestimate the kiting power of this Anivia and this Ezreal with the Iceborne Gauntlet. Uh, they almost kill Duke here, they pop his GA, but as soon as he comes out, he gets right into the Meganar form, gets a little, you know, a few more extra stats to work with, and they're just trying to walk through these Glacial Storms, walk through these Iceborne Gauntlet procs, and it just takes a toll 
as the fight goes on. Uh, Faker comes around, does manage to pick up the, the kill onto Coco at the end. Bang will also answer with one onto Chaser. So uh, Longshu holds though. They don't lose their turret. They don't. They have not lost an inhibitor yet. Yeah. But I don't think they're going to get another chance at an engage like that again. Watching Bang in that fight too is a thing of beauty. I mean, while everybody else was uh, getting near death, Bang barely took any damage during the entire thing. Protobell has uh, to be used right there. Blade active, popped out by Bang just for a little bit more poke damage. They want to use this opportunity to maybe think about taking another Baron. Yeah. And that's, that's one of those plays that I mean by bang. I mean, popping forward like that and chunking out the jungler, even going as far as to use your blade active, not something we would typically see, but the timing window not going to be used here as Chaser is going to be able to get right back into lane. Yep. So SK Telecom, they've got the luxury of vision control Dude. around the Baron. It's not Meganar anytime soon, and that could be a problem as long as you just turns onto him right away, gets stunned up, could be in trouble. Repel brings down Chaser on top of him. That's a good pick for Longju. A kill for Fury. Tempered Fate used to solve SKT just a little bit. There's the curtain call. Wolf blocking some of the damage, but not enough of it. Blank just staying out of the way. Expression got a little bit low in the back of that fight, but overall, SKT in trouble. Two shot barrage does not get the kill for Bang. Uh, Duke didn't have the Narbar ready, and they nope. did not anticipate the magical journey. Wasn't staying far enough back, so great collapse onto the flank by Longshu, but the gold difference is still so huge that SKT can just go for a 4v5 Baron. Wow, just taking it. Longju uh, recalling, they're not going to be able to stop this. Well, they have no ults. Yeah. No Curtain Call, no Hemo Plague, no Tempered Fate, no Subjugate. What are they going to do to stop this right now? There's not much that they're going to be able to handle, but they don't even uh, poke in, don't try. Don't try. That's not good advice. <laughs> they don't try. Oh, okay. Don't try. Coach Monte Cristo, 2016. <laughs> <laughs> 50 seconds until the dragon. And SKT. Need to be a bit careful, but Again, look at Faker, 6-0-1 on this Anivia. What a night and day difference from the games we've seen him play in the last two matches. After being 1-10-3 and three yeah. in his last three games combined, now he is putting together, nearly gets a pentakill, quadras on this Anivia. Yep. And SK Telecom, I don't know if you need this Ancient Dragon, SKT. I think you can just push that naked inhib in the mid lane with your Baron buff. You'd think so. And it looks like that's what they're thinking too. Longju waiting for a pick, but especially going to show. So they're trying to bait them to make a play onto this bottom side. I don't know if SKT is going to fall for it. Doesn't look like it. They will go for that Elder Drake, and that's going to give Longju a chance to come in from the side here. Pillar just pushes SK Telecom back. They yeah. with the big wall. Nobody's there to deal with the mid lane though, and that minion wave is eventually going to kill that inhibitor. Yep. Now Elder Drake does a lot of damage. Has a lot of health. Coco coming from the side. They want this flank just like they got in the bottom lane, but Bang turning onto him right away, forcing him away. SKT chasing. Coco could be in trouble. Bang gonna keep going in. Oh, Arcane shifts forward, but the Raptors helping out their vampire bro, blocking that damage. SKT turning now onto expression. The dragon has regenerated all of its health at this point. Bang over the wall. Some mystic shots. Two shot barrage takes a big chunk out of fear. Methodically poking down. Big waves in the top and mid right now, yeah, too. That's that's all that SKT's trying to do, is yeah. just buy time right now. And Bang is just basically 1v5-ing. Yeah. A lot of work. You're in Ezreal at this point, and your name is Bang. Under Drake, down to about a third to help. Looks like SK Telecom should be able to claim this one. And at that point, it's going to be pretty tough for Longju to stop SKT from walking in and winning the game. That's, that should do it. Baron oh, buff and Elder Dragon. What more could a League of Legends team ask for, Doa? Not much. A couple more Infernal Drakes maybe, but that's about it. All right, so this should be, one would expect, the final push of this game. Probably. We'll see if SKT can close it out. Longju not going to be able to engineer any more flanks. 
position of everything right now, and SK Telecom just forcing their way into the base of Longju. One last desperation fight is about all Longju has to try to stay alive in this game. SK Telecom just really taking the extra time to play it out very safe, very methodically today. Good game one. Oh, Coco gets stopped up, actually. Takes a lot of damage, trapped against that Anivia wall. Pillar slows down SKT, but Wolf's gonna dive in anyway. Yeah, with the Pillar down, it's very easy for SK Telecom to make a decision just to walk past the turret yeah. and sell them off. That's all three inhibitors now. SKT, no Baron buff, but they do, they still do have that Elder Dragon. Oh, they still have Baron buff. Oh, they do? Uh, oh, yeah, they do. Wait. Yes, they do. Oh, yeah, I see it on paper now. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. You can also just see the, the buffed up minions. Oh, yeah, I suppose. It's gone now. It was almost gone. That's what I meant. I've been fighting on the Banging Wolf. SKT just slowly pushing their way forwards. Towards the end of this game, the Super Minion waves are drawing closer. Nexus turret taking a little bit of damage. SKT, I mean, they're, they're so far ahead, they just don't need to go anywhere. Spiderlings actually saved. Yeah. Chaser there with that true shot barrage. Well, I guess SKT does need to go somewhere. Well, they've all got 2,000 gold, so they want to go spend their money, Doa. Makes sense. What's the point? You don't want to Scrooge McDuckett, right? Yeah. You want to spend that gold. Don't just hoard it. You could just say Scrooge. There was actually a, a, a character before <laughs> Scrooge McDuck who was known for hoarding. In fact, did you know this? You, Scrooge yeah. McDuck was actually named after Ebenezer Scrooge really? from A Christmas Carol. Wow. <laughs> How in the world would one figure that out first? Yeah, but I didn't grow up with Ebenezer Scrooge, man. I grew up with Scrooge McDuck. And so that's really, the, you that's, never watched A Christmas Carol as I a did. child? I did, but I watched a lot more episodes of DuckTales. <laughs> so, to me, Scrooge McDuck is the primary Scrooge. Scrooge, the actual Scrooge, is the lesser Scrooge. <laughs> the lesser of two Scrooges. That's, that's right. One instance where the sequel was better than the original. <laughs> well, well, we'll we will disagree on that, and I'm not even a big Dickens fan, so. Really? I'm a pretty big DuckTales fan, yeah. so. Scrooge McDuck all the way. Well, here it is. The last stand for Longju in game number one. Yep. Let's see if SKT can finish this one off. Here come the Super Minions. Bang just poking from the side with that missing shot. Baker puts down the wall. Temperate Bait doesn't really connect with anybody. And Longju in a bit of trouble now. There goes Nexus turret number one. There it is. Chaser nearly blown up in the back lines. Both Nexus turrets out of there. Grom ultimate thrown through just to force Longju back. Fury caught on his own. Everybody having to back away. And now SKT can turn towards the Nexus. That's going to be about it. Faker with a kill. Coco manages to pick one up as well. But the Nexus will fall. And SKT taking a pretty convincing game one. And that was a very different SK Telecom Doha yes. to what we saw in the last couple of best of threes. Like, like you said, methodical, slow, deliberate, planned. That's what that game was from SK Telecom. There wasn't the insane aggression, the desire to make the flashy outplays by diving under the enemy turret in risky situations. Yeah. That game was, was clean, and uh, they really, Longju, I think, didn't use enough of their early game power to force the issue, particularly at that very important first rank, because that's where the snowball begins. When the enemy team has two tiers, you should be the one pushing into the Drake. But the top lane matchup, I think, really threw off Chaser's pathing. Yeah. And uh, they did get punished for it. He's got to leave the Trundle alone in that situation. Say, good luck, buddy. You're on your own now. Goodbye. <laughs> Pretty much. And try and make a play for that Drake. Next time, abandon the Trundle. Well, Longju, again, you know, like, like I said earlier, close to making it a close game. You know, they had moments in the early game where they could have gotten the edge to Make it tough for SKT, but in the end, SKT winning game one. We will see when we come back. If SKT can get the 2-0, get themselves back on track, or if Longju can tie it up. Yeah, First, we'll take a look at 
damage to champions, though. Yeah, wow. Not bad. Over a thousand damage per minute to Ezreal. Faker Jeez. and Bang are number two, or Bang is number two, and Faker's number three in terms of damage per minute in this league, just behind Crown. And that one two carry punch has been huge for SK Telecom, and they use it again quite effectively. So, adjustments when they come back. Longju, I don't think you're going to be able to play Vladimir into an Indian Ezreal. Didn't work for the Rocks Tigers. It's not going to work for you here either. So, time to mix it up. We'll see what. Coco has to offer. Very true. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back with game two right after this.